Welcome back to another video of Tony Montana. Happy New Year to you guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I hope you did well. I hope that 2020 did not kick your ass, that somehow you kicked 2020's butt. So I um, wanted to talk about something that I um, one of the comments uh, mentioned. Uh, I guess he was speaking their mind, and I respect that. I will definitely, as long as it's uh, um, not full of curses, and not full of uh, uh, troll talking. I'm going to allow it. It's because, again, we are all different minds. And we have all our opinions. And if even though sometimes it may not make sense to me. But maybe someone else uh, will take benefit from, from uh, whatever comment you make. Um, Socrates 49 uh, basically really was uh, upset. Mm, not much said upset, but he, uh, really much... Uh, told me that I should uh, not include Tom Garner in my, uh, I guess, suggestions for breeders. Now, we are going to clarify who is in the suggestion list. There are give only four. And my criteria for giving this suggestion is two things. Um, let's see, one minute, how many? One is that the business has been around it has a history it has it's not a brand new kennel it's not a, a kennel that it has a year in existence uh so that's one some some time in the business two that it's the, uh, um, free of any legal issues the reason why is obviously if you're sending money to a person that has uh, legal issues and may not have dogs in the near future and may not be able to uh, fulfill your order, then there's problems. And then it comes to uh, refunds and then who gets refunded first. You know, that's uh, it, it's a whole idea or, or rather ordeal uh, that I'm trying to pro avoid for my uh my subscribers and anybody listening and wanting to uh, take note of my suggestions. So that, uh, that really is the two driving force. But I also I'm going to mention, also mention that the dogs you're um, being sold are true American people terriers, genetically speaking. Okay? Genetically speaking. Pedigree. Okay? So um, Tom Garner, as far as I know, Fulfills those three uh, points. He has been in uh, um, selling puppies for decades. I do not believe he uh, it has any legal issues. As a matter of fact, I think he's a, a, a ahead of the game in that. Uh, he could probably give some seminars or just you know sell some you know instructions on how to do it right. In that terms, and not to deal, not to have issues with uh, uh, the. Local and federal agencies, because that's really important. Sometimes, a lot, or a lot of times, we are we get into issue with the law enforcement because we know less than we should for what we have, and a lot of times uh, we get in trouble not because of uh, intent, but because of ignorance. Or, or not, and if you feel insulted with that word, I would say maybe undereducated in the topic of owning dogs or if you become a kennel what is required as a kennel blah 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 okay so uh i would say that tom garner in the, the specifics of um being around of being free from uh legal issues and i guess i would say the dogs i've never heard of people saying oh he's crossing to all the dogs or to all the lines, he has enough money that he can buy. He has bought a lot of dogs, a lot of American people terrier DNA genetic pool. Okay, so I don't think he would, have, you know, mix it with any like a Staffordshire Terrier or any other breed. I will say that the uh, genetically speaking, those dogs are American people terriers. So um, now you mentioned that you have that in your experience. You have very bad luck with Tom Garner dogs. Okay, this is Socrates 49. All right, so um, 
in to happen. I've had junk dogs as well. You know, sometimes you 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 have to chuck it on at uh, you know the, not all dogs work out. Or sometimes when you 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 know you might say this strain that I'm buying is not working out, or this source that I'm using is not working out. Source being in Tom Garner, whoever you're getting the dogs from. Okay, so you also mentioned that you, you complained that the dogs were too inbred and therefore not to the standard or in, too inbred and not to the standard, which I understand as well. Uh, and then I, at that point, I would say that, my friend, I think that all, with all due respect, that's on you because uh, unless he's forcing you to buy from a specific uh, uh, litter, and you did mention that uh, he has 10 to 15 uh, liters a year or more. Uh, you could have picked from another one that is not so inbred. You get me? So that particular part, I think it's uh, on you. And I understand you mentioned, and I respect your seniority. You, ha you, ha you say you have 30, 40 years uh, dealing with these dogs. Um, I respect the seniority, but at the same time, I will say if you have 30 or 40 years in the dogs, you won't be buying from Tom Garner. You will have other uh, sources that are, uh, and I remind everyone, I see the fraternity as, a, uh, as an onion with layers. So if you have 30, 40 years, you're in an in inner layer than, Tom, than, than people that would buy from Tom Garner. Or at least I would expect, you know, um, so... And if you don't, then you have to deal with whatever your layer has in terms of dogs until until you get seen by an inner layer and you get gifted or get access from an inner layer dog or level dog. Inner layer, you know, obviously the core will be the fastest lane, the core of the onion. So... You um so you really have to understand what you're buying, where you're buying, and why you're buying from there. Now you um you gave me this and and you told me that it, it I have a moral obligation. I have a moral obligation to support quality over quantity. And I I agree. I have a moral obligation to support quality over quantity. I also have a moral obligation. To make sure, make sure that the quality dogs are not given to the wrong hands, because novice hands with quality dogs will equate to potential news flash, news dog in the news, people in the news. Okay, and I go back to the um, to the dogs, and I go back to the sources I recommended. I recommended sources that I haven't heard any issues about. And I guess them being the breeders and understanding, capturing that the person buying a dog, is this is their first dog, they're not going to give this individual, should not be giving this individual, the uh, most energetic, active, front, <laughs> front of the pack type of puppy. You'll probably want to grab the one in the back that's always waiting for everything to happen for uh, so like all right is there anything else for me type and explain this to the person okay you're not getting the hyper you know i have level i have numbers for my dog for for dogs you know but that's a different story so, so uh, um this uh, so I, the breeder would give a puppy that isn't too amped up to you know it's more calm you know that way there's less of a chance for the dog to be uh, matched with a person that's too calm or uh, and would not satisfy the dog's requirements. Yeah, exercise requirements, attention requirement, uh, discipline requirement. So once again, as long as you, I, I, I mean, I don't know, you mentioned that, uh, I guess I'm not sure if you meant Tom Garner or all oh, uh, modern strains of dogs are uh, have men biters. Um, I would say no more than old strains of dogs. I would say that maybe perhaps even less 
strains of dogs today have uh, men biters because the old strains were certainly not for the public. Today's strains are more accessible to the wide audience because of the internet, because there's so, so, much, so many ways of communicating that were not around in, let's say, the 70s, the 80s. You know, and I, to not go back even more, you know, 50s, absolutely not. And there were men biters, men biters you, that created strains, you know, and, and, and it was okay because it was not a public breed at the time. Now we have a public breed. This is a public breed. So we have to recognize what, what we, what, where we are now in the 21st century. We have to recognize that. We have to recognize that in order for the dogs to continue, in order for, the dogs, the dog breed, in order for the breed to continue, the public has to have uh, some sort of feelings for the dog, positive feelings, love for the dogs, love for the breed. And the only way you could do that is by uh, allowing the public to get, you know, the the lower, the calls, allowing the, uh, the people to get calls that obviously have Make sure that the calls are not for bear biting, <laughs> because those are should not definitely not even be given to anyone unless that person is a you know, like super experienced. But definitely the call should be fixed. And I realize most people don't will never buy a fixed dog, um, and that's why people like me, if I ever have a breeding, I am giving them for free. I'm giving puppies for free. Uh, that are my call dogs that I do not fit my standard, but I, I in order for me not to sell them, I'm I will give them for free, and I hope that other people, other breeders, do the same thing. Give them for free, fixed. That's the key there, and the operation should be paid by the person, and obviously the transportation of picking up the pup it would be normal. So the so, so the 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 uh, person would only be paying for. Uh, the operation of the dogs so that you can breed it and transportation, that's it. And they will get a quality, de a, a true American Pitbull Terrier just fixed. And obviously, because it's fixed early, it should be a, a lower temperament dog. That would be ideal for a, a, a first time American Pitbull Terrier owner. Maybe 10 years after that, they want to buy a, a, a dog that's not fixed. They have experience. They have had this dog, and, and even though it may not be as amped up as the uh, as the dog would be if it wasn't fixed, it's still an American People Terrier, and it still requires some of the same things. Okay. Right. So I hope that this uh, has uh, clarified my stand. I definitely am not trying to promote any breeder specifically. I am just trying to uh, provide sources that I believe have dogs that are closest to the standard DNA, structure, mental, and that is they're not going to rip you off, that you're not sending your money and, and deposit and then you, you, you never hear from them again, which happens a lot. So I'm not promoting these this four... I mean, I know all the sources that are deeper into the core, all the breeders that are deeper into the core, but I would first, first, they're not public. They don't want to be public. They don't want to sell to the public. They only want to sell people that are experienced with the breed and know what they're doing with real core, core, inner core peoples. You know, they're not for the majority of people they even come sometimes with uh little issues that are not will not be acceptable for a dog inside a house dog or just you know because that's not something that the breeder was look concerned about in in, in generation they were looking for working dogs you know that was the beginning at the end of the criteria and only the worker working dogs or bread and so these particular puppies may not be ideal for uh, people that are just looking for a pet but anyway i hope you enjoy this uh, video 
I guess I just have to do it in Spanish now. This is Tony Montana. Till next time.